Welcome to Firefighting in Canada This Week. I'm Brianna Charlebois and today's edition is brought to you by VFIS of Canada, a division of CVIS Incorporated, Canada's largest insurer of firefighters. This week, an Edmonton firefighter spent more than two hours submerged in ice as part of an annual fundraiser for muscular dystrophy research. Then we'll take a look at a recent NFPA report focusing on new challenges posed by electric vehicles. And we'll highlight Mark Vanderfeist's latest Back to Basics article on ground ladders featured in Firefighting in Canada magazine. Edmonton firefighters took part in an annual rooftop campout last week. For the 15th consecutive year, the event was used to raise awareness and funds for muscular dystrophy research. Among the participants was firefighter Wesley Bowman, who took the campout to the next level by spending a total of two hours and 20 minutes encased in an ice chamber. Last year, Bowman spent part of the fundraiser in a zero degree Celsius ice bath, but ramped it up this year by adding a standing ice chamber. He said he prepared for the event by taking cold showers and ice baths daily. Bowman suffers from PTSD in relation to his firefighting work. He said that this gives him perspective on suffering and has seen firsthand the effects of muscular dystrophy and wanted to do all that he could to give back to his community. I don't care if I set a world record, if I can stay in there for these families and their kids and show them how much I love them by suffering the way that I suffer for an hour, that would be enough. That'll be inspirational for myself and for them. Bowman actually broke the world record by a full 12 minutes, but because the proper steps weren't taken prior to his attempt, it doesn't officially count as a Guinness World Record. He said that the department has already begun gaining interest from sponsors for next year's campout, so he can officially attempt to break the current record. It was one of those moments where I, I was able to do something that nobody's ever been able to do and nobody can ever take that away from me. That's my gift and that's the love that I have for my brothers and for all these poor kids with MD. I truly believe that the power of the mind is more powerful than anybody could ever imagine. I say, you know what, we're working on a cure. We got these smart guys at the university. They're editing genes and they're doing phenomenal work. They're going to figure out how to cure it. Though their fundraising goal for this year's campout was $100,000, they have already surpassed this amount by over $5,000 and will continue to accept donations until March. The number of electric vehicles on the road is rapidly growing, but critical questions remain about how to effectively respond to the most severe EV crashes. In a recent report, the NFPA looked into the emerging issues associated with the new technology. Perhaps the biggest issue posed is stranded energy. Stranded energy is defined as any scenario where electrical energy remains in a battery without an effective means to remove it. This typically happens when the battery is damaged and normal function ceases. There is no way for responders to determine how much energy remains in a damaged battery, and no way to drain that energy to reduce the threat. The NFPA report found no viable solutions have yet been posed. In fact, the NFPA suggests that, even after impounded, an electric vehicle with a damaged battery be stored at least 50 feet away from other vehicles and buildings. This research will likely inform the development of a new battery and vehicle standards, as the number of electric vehicles on the road increase. The research found that stranded energy is a widely overlooked issue with little scientific literature. For current training, as well as emergency field guides, emergency response guides, and safety bulletins for specific scenarios such as responding to a submerged electric vehicle, visit evsafetytraining.org. To check out the study, visit nfpa.org. Mark Vanderfeist's latest column in Firefighting in Canada discusses the importance of firefighters familiarizing themselves with the ground ladder. He argues that the ladder is often forgotten on the training ground, but that it needs to be a tool that every firefighter must be familiar with and use regularly. He compares the need to know your ladder to the relationship with a significant other, calling it ladder dating. The series will include subjects like balance points, ladder lengths, the weight and feel of the ground ladder, ladder tip positioning, when to use two firefighters versus one, working on the ladder, climbing angles, getting on and off the ladder, and limitations to the ladder. The first article of the series was published in February's edition of Firefighting in Canada magazine. You can also read the story online by visiting firefightingincanada.com. This is Annex Business Media's Niche TV. Thanks again to VFIS of Canada, a division of CVIS Incorporated, Canada's largest insurer of firefighters. Stay tuned for our next episode on Friday, February 28th.